Hey, podcast listeners, we are continuing today our discussion for Audrey Helps Actors Quitting the Business, When Is It Time to Leave Acting, Life After Acting. Today, we're going to be talking to Bridget Valdez. She threw a nice little tantrum a few years ago and quit the business and swiftly came back, thereby taking a break. And I was on the treadmill and I hated everyone around me, but not in the way of like, I don't know, in the way of like, if this is my life. Yeah. I'm going to die. She has had a lot of success in the years that followed, and she's going to discuss with you what has worked for her, what has been hard for her, and where she is now in her career. And then we talked to Tara Redfield, also known as the food pervert, about the dangers and pitfalls that so many of us end up falling into about becoming a professional student instead of becoming a professional actor. I think it's very easy to have it happen, especially for personalities Mm -hmm. who like school. Right. Like, I'm a very type A person, and like, I was always teacher's pen, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Like, I always, like, liked doing well in school. Mm-hmm. And so, like, an acting class can become that same kind of environment. Where you're just like Rewards oh, for being exactly. great. Exactly. And uh-huh. they're clapping. Uh-huh. Everyone's uh-huh. coming uh-huh. This is a woman who used to be an actress and a few years ago decided that she was going to leave her acting class behind and her agents and pursuits and pursue her life as a food blogger and food personality and chef. She's having a lot of success with that. I wanted to interview somebody who was still in the business though not actually acting anymore but still very much in show business part of Hollywood living in Los Angeles so you can see maybe you don't want to be an actor but you still want to be performing to some degree maybe you want to host all of those things are really great options for actors she's doing very well she's very happy she was just on the Today Show and we wish her all the luck so listen up and you can hear her process and why she was inspired to move forward but first my conversation with Bridget Enjoy and hope you're on your way to an audition. Audrey helps actors because they don't know anything. What's up, everybody? I am Audrey Moore with Audrey Helps Actors, and today we have Bridget Valdez. I like that you like going. I know. I get like I don't know what to do with the microphone. (laughs) I'm not a singer. It's so funny. Just sit here. Yeah, I think you just sit there. I think mics are kind of magical nowadays. You know, it's not 1934. Bridgie and I, we have quite the uh, long story about. (laughs) <laughs> Bridgie and her days of deciding to quit. I didn't. Spoiler. Oh, spoiler alert. She didn't quit. Yeah, she I came back for it again. We worked together at Crustacean, the Correct. Krusty Crust. At the Krusty Crab. Do we want to say the name of the restaurant? Does it matter? Who cares? Ooh, Nobody knows. Just I was a waitress and you were a hostess with a mostess. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, she came to me one day and she was very nervous. I was so scared to tell you. She was... You're like always have an opinion. And then you didn't. And I was like, what? I know. I was actually like waiting for you to be like, this is so dumb. And then you were like, you do you. And I was like, you never. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the thing is people are always like so scared to tell me. Are you worried that I'm going to be like, no. Like, what is the concern? I think that you're just going to be super judgmental about it. <laughs> and I'm not, right? No. I'm like. I'm like, no, there was no judgment. No judgment. I'm, I'm like just, either way. Either way. I'm honestly like so pro people quitting. I feel like it's a, yeah. it's just like any profession where you start out into it and then you discover what it is. Yeah. And then when you discover what it actually is, sometimes it's not as exciting. What you, want, you thought you wanted. Yeah, what you yeah. thought you wanted for your life. And <laughs> it happens to all professions. How long had you been acting oh, before God. you were like, I'm out? Like in LA? In LA, let's say. About three years. How far had you gotten were you union Uh, were you booking did you have an agent like what was the story for all that I had a commercial agent I was must join I had done one big commercial Mm -hmm. and then I had done two that could have been big but never aired Mm. and I had done like UCB Mm. like 101 through 401 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um I had been accepted into advanced studies i I think I had done advanced studies classes already. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And I was like on an indie improv team. And then mm-hmm. I was just... You're busy. Yeah, but mm-hmm. not like... Well, you weren't auditioning busy. Right. But you were busy. You were doing what most people should do, which yeah. is like get involved, get seen. Yeah. I was in an acting class. You were in an acting which class. Which I fucking hated. Okay, good. That's always a great way to start quitting. Get into an acting <laughs> class you hate. Why did you quit? Mm, frustration. I think like... I mean, I don't want to talk shit about, like, schools. But being in one class that Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like I have to be here because I have to be in class. But I hated it. 
I hated my teacher mm-hmm. or not exactly we had two teachers in the class mm-hmm. and there was like one, one who I really liked mm-hmm. and then one who I was like I don't trust you mm-hmm. you just want my money mm-hmm. and like he was just a dick about like if I would kind of go for advice or things I don't know yeah but not in a like we won't talk about way. who this is no no, no 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 yes no I, I totally know yeah uh-huh. And then I think I was just like over being on an improv team in my group, mm. Mm. but I felt like, I don't know, it was a lot of obligation and I wanted to drop all my obligations mm. and like make mm-hmm. choices in my life. Like you felt like you had to do these things because you what, weren't auditioning or weren't going out, so these are things that like you're supposed to do, so you had to do yeah, them. Yeah, I was like, well, uh-huh. I work at a restaurant, right? right? So you're like, okay, no, I'm an actor, so then what are you doing? that you're oh I see right you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it was me trying to be productive and like make putting pressure on yourself for myself Mm -hmm. but yeah it was Mm -hmm. all like Mm hate-based I love that yeah (laughs) a lot of people do that I think a lot of people fill their time with what they should be doing because they feel bad about where they are where Mm -hmm. they aren't like you said you feel like you have to be productive because otherwise you're just hanging out Working at a restaurant. Exactly. Feeling bad about yourself. Right. Seating people. How is quitting? Have you seen Five Year Engagement? I don't think I have. Oh my God. Watch it. Okay. Okay. So I had decided to leave in December. Mm. It was like a very long, drawn out, dramatic thing, obviously. Uh Where I was like, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And, or actually in November, because my Mm -hmm. birthday's December 2nd. And I told friends at my birthday party that I was moving Mm. back to the Bay Area. Mm. So then I quit my job for January 1st. And then... We were planning to leave February 1st or 2nd or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime of like having all of January off, Mm -hmm. I watched Five Year Engagement (laughs) and I had like an emotional breakdown. Ah! Like I cried for like two solid hours and Nick had to leave the apartment because he didn't know what to do and I was like, it's it's good, (laughs) you know? And he left and he called his mom and he called his best friend and he didn't know what to do and he came back and I was like still kind of weepy. Yeah. And he was like, what the fuck is going on? Right, yeah. And that movie takes place partially in San Francisco. Mm. So I was like, I want to live there, but I want to make movies like that. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Uh And then so it was like very... I don't know. I forget the point of the question now. I was asking you, rambling. how is quitting? So I think you oh, were so tell me bad. about it. Oh, so it was bad. It was bad. Yeah, <laughs> because it was like, I was so excited about it. At and first. I, uh-huh. Because it felt good to let go of the obligations you're putting on yourself, all yeah. the shoulds. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I watched that movie and I was like, no, but I want to do that. Then I just became super confused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember that. I remember yeah. you being super confused. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you're like, I'm quitting. And I was like, great, you know, and you were really shocked that I wasn't like, how could you yeah. or something? Everyone's really you scared failure. when they tell me. Yeah, you <laughs> failure. You give her up her. But instead I was like, the only thing I'll say is we have a mutual friend who's in her same casting. We'll call her Claire. And I said, if Five years from now, you're sitting at home in the Bay Area, and Claire is up there accepting her Emmy Award for Best New Series. Will you be able to watch that and feel like, good for her? And I was like, fuck no. (laughs) And I was like, okay. Because I have a feeling about people quitting versus people moving on. (laughs) <laughs> and I think people should move on, and I think that's healthy. And I think when people quit, I mean, do whatever you want to do, but if you can find a way to move on instead of just be like, I quit, fuck you, stupid business, like yeah. you can go fuck yourself, that to me doesn't seem as healthy or productive. But when you're totally. like, I do have lots of friends who are like, I'm moving on. I'm moving on to this profession. I'm moving on to grad school for this thing. Yeah. And they're really passionate about that. Yeah. And that to me always seems nicer in the heart of course how, it does. of course it does yeah how long were you gone for a month ah like a month and a half maybe that's funny okay so tell them about you on the treadmill because I remember this very well oh my god okay so we when we left we put our stuff in storage because I kind of already knew at this point I was going to come back uh-huh. you know and we were staying in my husband's like hometown which is 
lovely Mm -hmm. and there's nothing there and everything closes at nine (laughs) and we were at his local gym Mm -hmm. and I was on the treadmill and I hated everyone around me but not in the way of like (laughs) like you I don't know in the way of like if this is my life yeah I'm gonna die yeah. like everyone was in their local gym and being like oh that's my treadmill because mm. I work out there every day right. I don't know I think I spilled water or something and it was like the most uncomfortable thing in my whole life <laughs> because everyone is like watching you yeah because it's, it's a small. small town like they don't even have a high school it's oh that my small god you know oh my god. And I was like, I miss LA Fitness where I could take like a dump in the middle of the floor and like nobody would bat it. Nobody eye. cares. They're like, well, yeah. just clean it up. What I love about that story is I've heard that same thing from different people oh who come God. back. That it's them at the gym on the treadmill. And there's Weird. something about like being on the treadmill in like your hometown, literally oh. going nowhere fast. Yes. And <clears throat> so I came back and like things were like actually great I was just getting a ton of auditions and stuff yeah. commercially that happens a lot I mean people let go right yeah and I think like a lot of actors experience that um here in LA that I talked to it's just the letting go always for whatever reason brings in opportunities that's why when you go on vacation you always get the callback or audition of right. your dreams or a lot of people get auditions in yoga class or when they're like napping because it just really works for them. Yeah. You know, is it better now? Oh, yeah. Way better. Because, you know, I was like, it's a choice now. Mm-hmm. Like I can remember, so I lived near that Whole Foods in um, oh, West yeah. Hollywood, right? Yeah. The nightmare Whole Foods of all the nightmare Whole Foods. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. terrible. But yeah. I was able to walk, so it wasn't actually that bad for me. But... I remember walking like through the little alleyway to go home Mm -hmm. and I was like this is not what I want for my life like Mm -hmm. where I'm just like super miserable Mm -hmm. and like everyone that's such a shitty neighbor like Mm -hmm. neighborhood part of town Mm -hmm. at least my street was Mm -hmm. and my apartment was like a slum super sad yeah Yeah. Uh when I came back because it was all like choice based Mm -hmm. and not like if I want to be an actor this is what I have to do Mm -hmm. I remember that for you yeah it was like it was a choice suddenly. Yeah. Do you recommend people quit and why? Yeah. yeah. I think, here's what I think. <clears throat> if you want to quit, like you said, if it's moving on, mm-hmm. or if it's even like, I have one, my other best friend mm-hmm. who is an actor and she's like one of the best, most talented, funniest. She's incredible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's the whole package. And she has she's a hard beautiful. time. Beautiful. Yes. Because she's so specific. Mm -hmm. For her, because she moved on from acting. Mm -hmm. And for her, it really came down to like, this is no longer making me happy. Mm -hmm. And that is not how I want to live my life. Mm -hmm. And now she has this job that she loves. Mm -hmm. And she's just, Mm -hmm. she's so much happier. Yeah, I have friends like that too. Yeah. Yeah. And she's still in LA, which I think a lot of people leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like in her case, I think 100%. But it was different than me. Because I was like didn't want to quit but I just felt like I didn't have any options right you were grumpy about the way you were living your life so you thought you would change where your life was being lived and the profession in which you were living it in instead of just changing you inside of that right right but do you feel like the dream changed for you versus your friend like why do you think you had to keep going and she did not I don't really know because I don't know why she quit I mean, I do, yeah, I know it was because it was making her unhappy a Mm -hmm. lot. Um, Mm -hmm. But I still think if she, like, the dream is basically, like, I'm going to get a series and be amazing, right? And everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, we want to work with Bridget more than anybody. (laughs) And then be like, cool, cool, got to take my girl along. Right. You know? And she's going to, like, do little bits, Mm. like, bit parts in it or whatever, Mm. but still have her job that she loves and makes her happy. Mm -hmm. So you're doing well. I just let everyone know. Bridget's doing very well. She's booking commercials, booking television. She's got really great representation. She worked a long time to make that happen. She has struggled. She has called me with many a panicked phone calls, (laughs) and she has called me with many a celebratory phone calls. But I do want to ask you, of your friends that you notice who are working, do you notice any thread of similarity between them? I mean, to be honest, you're my only close friend Mm. who's, like, working 
regularly. And it's not that I my friends don't work. No, I understand do, what you're saying. Yeah. But um, you're the one who works the most consistently, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I would say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think for me, like mm-hmm. what changed in me mm-hmm. was I was like, okay, well, this is what I want, but this isn't what I have to have in order to be happy. Uh-huh. And then I just like did other things that made me happy. Yes, I did the same thing. And I, t- I definitely saw that in you. Yeah, I was like... I was really astounded that I was like working so hard to be an actor so that I could be rich and famous so that I could have money, travel, <laughs> to eat, have happiness, <laughs> eat good food and like spend time with friends and I realized like I had a good serving job, I made money, I could travel, I could have good things and be with yeah. friends and eat good food. And so yeah. I didn't know why I was like panicking to do A to get B when I already had B. Totally. So I could just do A without maybe the panic and maybe give it a shot. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay, five questions. Are you ready? Ready. What is the hardest thing about the business? God, for me, it was getting a, getting representation. Yeah, getting good representation. Took me seven years, y'all. Yeah. Seven years, y'all. Seven years. I had commercial, like I said. Mm-hmm. You, you know. did. You always had commercial. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thankfully. Mm-hmm. Now, to be fair, can we like have a discussion? Oh, yeah. My skin was hella bad. Yeah, I mean, this is an important thing that she's leaving out. I just want to say. Yeah, it was like, like you look at me and you're like, ooh, girl, bad. Like, I see people like this now. And at the time, it was also a really hard thing for me because it was so emotional. Yeah, it was really emotional. You got really defensive about it. Well, and like, I wouldn't go places. Like, I would honestly, people would be like, oh, come to sing. And I would back out last minute because I was like, I'm fucking ugly. (laughs) And I hate myself. And I wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a really big thing, you guys, because she was on a veil for a lot of big for jobs. Like, oh, and she would get into these really great meetings with these really great agents. And then she would see them. Mm-hmm. And, and then, only one person brought it up. Yes. And she would always say, I just wish that if it's about my skin, that they would just tell me it's about my skin. And I would say... It's about your skin. <laughs> but like I had done everything and I then know. just magic happened and I met this woman randomly. Who was like... But I don't think magic happened. What actually happened was your dad said something to you. Oh, that's true. And I remember because you changed. Because I yelled at you and yelled at you and yelled Uh at you and was sweet and was sweet and was like... Right. I was like, you cannot... Okay, but like... Okay, okay, I just want to say. I just want to (laughs) say. Okay. So I had like done literally everything except for Accutane. Like Mm -hmm. I had gotten facials for hundreds of dollars, like twice a week, everything. Like I did everything yeah. that I could yeah and then my dad was mm-hmm. over at my apartment and was like listen if you think that's what it is because I was like well I just can't get anything because my skin is so gross <laughs> and he's like he's the person who will always tell me the truth like my mm-hmm. mom is wonderful and like sweet as pie but mm-hmm. she just loves me in a way that's like so much that yeah. I could like kill someone <laughs> and she'd be like you did that so perfect <laughs> Love it. You know? Yes, I do. Or my yeah. dad would be like, I'm turning you in and you're going to jail because that was wrong. <laughs> right, right, right. So you were like complaining about your skin and yeah. how it was holding you back. And then he said? He said, well, either figure out, figure it out or find another job. Which is what I had been saying to her for like six years. But you can't hear it, you totally. know? Well, and I also grew up like very frugal. Yeah, cheap. We'll call it cheap. Yeah, we'll call it cheap. <laughs> she grew up AF. cheap. So even though I had spent all of this money on my skin at that time I was no longer getting facials and stuff because mm-hmm. I was like well it didn't help and Doesn't I probably work. spent honestly like $20,000 I'm sure I bet I you know yeah. I just my dad was like well if it takes you a hundred thousand dollars right to get your skin under control mm-hmm. then it will be worth it if that's what you want to do and I get my cheapness from daddy <laughs> yeah, so dad gave you permission to spend on your career uh-huh we and call that an investment guilty. in business we call it because Here's the thing, that what you really did is you blew 20 grand, yes. right? Because you were trying to fix it in all these other ways. It took your dad saying like, no, whatever the investment is, is a worthy investment if you're going to be miserable every day that you don't have it. Totally. Right. Totally. Love dad. Thanks dad. No. What is the best thing about the business? I don't know. You know what? Like I think people hate auditioning, but I love auditioning. And having a great audition. Like going in and even if I don't get the part, I'm yes. like, I booked that room. Yeah. And that because yeah. like yeah. of course being on set is like what you want. But, but that's not, also not anything that just is luck. And also it's point. not the majority when you're starting out. 
Like no. when you're starting out, you're auditioning X amount of times and then you're on set once in a while. Yeah. Until you start getting the jobs where you audition once in a once because you're on set most of the time. But before yeah. then, the time for an actor to act is in auditions. Yeah. And like theatrical auditions. I won't say, not commercial like I auditions. love a commercial audition. But when I leave a fun one, I'm like, that was fun. Yeah. I love you commercial know. auditions. Do you? Good girl. Yeah. But I book a lot of commercials. Yeah, I make that way. money. Why acting? I don't know. It's the thing I'm best at. It's like, honestly, and I, we've had this conversation where you're like, I have so many friends that are like, it's the only thing I'm good at. And like, not me, I'm good at like all of these things. And in a way I am. You are. But it's yes. the only thing that I have ever loved doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like everything else, it's like, yeah, I'm like super fine. personable and like, I'm a great server. Do I want to <laughs> fucking serve? Like, no, I would be great at so many jobs, but I don't think I would feel fulfilled mm. mm-hmm. yeah I get that what do you wish that somebody had taught you or managed to get you to understand when you were just a little dreamer or a little <laughs> student thinking about this profession mm. I just wish that somebody would have taught me the entire business side yes. like I knew literally nothing coming here like listening to a podcast called Audrey Helps Actors exactly and girl understanding Way to do. no seriously though because yeah. I was like uh Okay, well, I went to acting school. Mm -hmm. I'm here. (laughs) You know? And then I was like, well, I'm taking classes, so, like, that's what I have to do. I'm here. Right, that's right. And that's people taking your money. Exactly. And and, and it's it's valuable. Can be very good. Can be. Right, but you have to also know, like... How to book jobs. Yeah. How to get agents. Yeah. How to get a reel. Yeah. How to get your... That's what I wish I would have done earlier. But I think it's... Uh, who told you to do <laughs> I that know, earlier? I know. Thanks, girl. Uh, wait, Listen, wait. Audrey told me like two years before. And I was like, oh, yeah, girl, I'm definitely going to do that. And then I was like, oh, I'm so scared to spend money. Right. And so for you, you had an emotional thing, mm-hmm. both about investing in your career, which a lot of actors have, by the way. And I mm-hmm. so recommend people invest, 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 invest. Yeah. You had an emotional thing about that. And you had an emotional thing... About your skin. Yeah. And the two really held you back. And I kept saying yeah. to you, you need to invest in your career and you need to work on your skin. You need to fix that shit. Yeah. And you said no. And that's not uncommon. I feel like most mm-hmm. people, when I'm like, listen, you need to blah, 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 because I'm bossy. <laughs> it's almost that's why I love you. Yeah, it's, true. it's almost like a year to two year turnaround until yeah. they do it. What is your biggest struggle right now in your career, do you feel like? What are you, like, grumpy about or struggling with? Um, I don't feel grumpy about things right now. Good. I do feel... I don't know if I should even say this. This is, like, I don't know if I should say this on the podcast. Here, do you want to pause? Can we pause? This break brought to you by actor Neuroses. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay, we paused to make sure that, like, nothing she had to say to me was, like, admitting to murder. And it's so, it's not. Which I just, so, like, what she's going to tell you is the thing that she told me, just in full transparency. And it's so funny because actors are so weird. Okay, so what is the thing that is the biggest struggle for you right now? I'm just not auditioning. Yeah. And when I do, I'm booking. That's right. That's very common. Yeah. And I'd say, like, what people tend to feel an experience which is really interesting to me is they always think that the next level is the level where they're going to be auditioning and booking all the time I think I'm freaked out because I was auditioning so much mm-hmm. like not too long ago not like too long ago, ago right? yeah I mean yeah. like multiple theatrical auditions a day which I never thought would happen in my mm-hmm. life you know what mm-hmm. I mean ever since like Thanksgiving mm-hmm just so far and few in between yeah and there's no rhyme or reason to it ever no I mean that's the thing and that's why I think actors put a lot of um, pressure on themselves to make the world happen Mm -hmm. is because it does feel so out of your control well the thing is is that like I know in the past when I wasn't auditioning Mm -hmm. like commercially or whatever Mm -hmm. I would kind of like veer towards like blaming my agent mm-hmm. but I don't feel that way at all right now right, like I the trust reps. them so much mm-hmm. I know they're doing their job uh-huh. and so and they love you and they love and me and you book yeah so why would they not totally right. so then you know then you go into the psychological actor thing of like what is there something wrong with me right yeah now? is there something or something I'm not doing 
Yeah. But then I'm like, I don't want to be needy about it. So I and don't want to like admit it. have you to them at all? Oh, no. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. But I am having, this has never happened to me before. I'm very excited. Oh my, gosh. my managers like want to take me to lunch. <laughs> And that's like a normal thing that's never happened to me. It's yeah. very exciting. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, well, you know, I think that's a thing that will come up. Well, naturally it usually and comes organically. up. And they probably actually are going to bring it up with you. I yeah. Mean, what happens to me is my reps often will hit it off at the pass. I know a lot of commercial agents out there, they send emails out mm-hmm. to their clients saying like, hey guys, just so you know, it's really slow right now. Don't panic. So mm-hmm. they can sort of like head off the actor neuroses right. early on, right? And then my manager is always sending me my talent reports of what they've mm-hmm. submitted me on. They are forwarding me emails that they send to casting directors to pitch me. So um, does that freak you out more? I've never gotten one of those. No, like, no, 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 because it's, it just always says to me, like, they're doing their job mm-hmm. and they're good at their job. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not getting in... It's not personal, you know? I mean, I tell people, there's a line to get in certain doors. My managers have the relationships that they have, and my agents have the relationships that they have, but it's for a part that I'm particularly right for, and they just don't have the relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. But these other five, it just takes five other agents with two slots apiece or whatever for some roles, and you're not going to get in. And a lot of times, it's being offered out. Right. I mean, that's the truth. Totally. It's being offered out, and they're not going to see me because it's being offered out. Right. And it's just a waste of their time. And I don't, and they're not going to reply to the email to say, like, sometimes they do actually, but they don't often reply to the email and say, we've offered it out. We're not going to bring anybody in. Like, they just send the email and I don't go in, and I don't know why that is. And then I get to play, like, the actor mind game of, like, when is it going to be enough? Like, when am I going to finally get me into all the rooms of magical gold? Yeah. Well, you're never going to feel. Like, this is where I want it to be. Like, you arrived. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're always like, oh, this is nice, but now I want this. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's just like constantly uphill, which is something I like. And so do you have like a feeling of how you're going to get out of that? Or you think that's just like, just how that is? No, I think it's just how it is. Because like I said, I do, I trust. You trust I trust, you know. Yep, I feel And I think like it's just a thing right now. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And... It'll change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I think we should tell them about what you're on for your skin because a lot of people struggle with that. Oh, you guys. It's called Arcana. And if it ever goes away, I'm going to like kill myself. You'll just buy it all. I'm like... Yeah, I will like buy the company no, straight up. Okay. okay. It's called Arcana. A-R-C-O-N-A. And it literally changed my life. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> what is one thing that you want people to know about? It can be about acting. It could be about the world. It could be a movie. It could be whatever you want. The five-year engagement is really good. <laughs> um, no, no. What is it? I don't know. Take vacations, guys. I'm taking a lot of vacations coming up. Yeah. Which I never do because mm-hmm. all I do is go to people's weddings. <laughs> Not that she doesn't love her friends who are getting married, but... I mean, I do, but, you know, it's annoying. So take vacations. Take vacations. Like, treat yourself. I want people to know about uh, Trial and Error, the show on television right now. It was like a late mid-season pickup it has john lithgow i oh my god i heard about this i here's the thing i read the pilot last year uh-huh. and i was like very concerned for them because it's like it's the serial podcast but the comedy version is very good that makes me so see if you say serial podcast but comedy version yes. to me that's like a dream no see i was like really nervous because i just watched making a murderer and i was like this because is you not- hired john lithgow right exactly but i was like this is not a funny topic you guys it like, people- is actually oh, it is ahead, okay so Maybe. he does so john lithgow is in Ugh. it along with sherry shepherd is so incredible on this show and i had uh wanted to audition for her part and uh-huh. i had like worked on it uh-huh and seeing what she does with it is so fantastic. But yes. really, everybody is good. The kid from Hand of God, Stephen Boyer, he's a Broadway kid. Oh, yeah. He does a really great job. I just like the weird character actors because that's always my bag. Yes. All right. Thank you, Bridget, so much. For Thanks. Thanks. What I really love about that episode with Bridget is just how honest she is about investing in her career. So many of us come from lower class, middle class families where 
investing in your career because it's really like investing in yourself is a hard thing to do. And eventually we find ourselves in this place where we're in so much pain from not going further in our careers that one of two things happens. We either quit or we take a leap of faith. We find some money either on a credit card or we work a little bit harder or many of us have savings already and we decide to put that money down and start investing into the quality of our careers. And for me personally, I have always experienced a return on my investment. I know Bridget has, my friends all have. I so encourage everyone to do that. We'll do an episode on that later, but I just love her journey with that and how well it's worked out for her. Up next, get ready for Tara Redfield, the food pervert. This is a wonderful episode where we discuss her transition from acting into becoming a food pervert, food personality extraordinaire. Going now, right? Hi guys, we're just talking about sugar cereals. So how old were you when you started acting? Were you like one of those who started when you were like five? Yes, yeah. I was, it was about that time when I decided I was gonna be a movie star. Yeah. And that was, you know, I had, there was no other plan. It was just, I'm gonna move to LA and be a Hollywood movie star like Marilyn Monroe. It was right. just like, or Madonna, or like, you Any know, them. I idolized all those just like blonde women. Yeah, yeah. and where are you from? I am from Sisters, Oregon. Oh I, my God. I grew up on 160 acres oh and alfalfa God. grass farm. So, oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, a hay farm. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. I didn't yeah. know that about you. So you and I know each other from acting class. Yes. And mm-hmm. for the record, because I think people might have an idea about people who quit as being either untalented or not hardworking and lazy. And for the record, that was never true about Tara. I was always yeah. loved your work. I thought you were Thank always you. fantastic. I was such a big <laughs> fan of yours uh, and really hardworking. You were always putting up work. You were always working on things you went to workshops Mm -hmm. I I, from where I saw it looked Mm -hmm. like you hustled you had a great support group of Mm -hmm. you have like four really great besties that are all Mm -hmm. still acting yes yes Mm -hmm. they hustle with you and you were really great at supporting each other Mm -hmm. and so what year did you move out here to pursue your dreams in particular so I moved to LA in 2006 Mm -hmm. after I graduated I did the theater program at Chapman University Uh, in Orange County so Uh I graduated from Chapman yep and then and moved here in 2006. So you came here just in time for the writer strike. So yes. congratulations. Yes, it was crazy. <laughs> and then you came here just in time for the economy collapse. Mm-hmm. So that was good. Yep. And you came here right at the death of film. So that was all really good timing all for great you. Stuff. I can't mm-hmm. imagine why you had a hard time. That's so great. <laughs> Did you like did you like wake up one day and we were like I am quit or did you kind of phase out and then one day you were like I guess I'm not acting anymore well so my story is so seven years ago yeah. is when I started the food pervert my uh, right. food blog right so and I started that just as it was literally just a hobby it was just something to do that was also creative because right. I still I loved food I loved yeah. writing I loved yeah. photography yeah so it was a hobby because yeah. as you know acting is very inconsistent mm-hmm. you just, so it's yep. like in those Down dull times time. mm-hmm. I was just like I still want to do something creative mm-hmm. you know it just it got to the point where I just felt I didn't want to split myself anymore mm. between because it was other. a constant it's like should I put all my energy on pursuing you know auditioning and acting mm-hmm. or should I focus it on really developing my this. food personality and why did you feel like you had to choose can you talk about that for me I think it just got too overwhelming I just felt like with the food there was just way more doors were opening with that ask you did you feel like that was just an easier path that was giving you more enjoyable m- momentum faster mm-hmm. than acting and so you were like yeah well why the fuck not why don't I just go there exactly mm-hmm. because you know I'm one of those people who believe you don't know how you're gonna get to your final destination it might be a path you totally didn't expect yeah that's great I just feel like yeah with the food there were just these opportunities you know I did a reality TV cooking show on mm-hmm. TNE the mm-hmm. TNT with mm-hmm. Emerald Lagasse and Ty Pennington mm-hmm. who were hosting it you know mm-hmm. so like and I was like I I'm fine. Do I'm good being just being me. Yeah, you are. You know, yeah. and talking about food on TV like if yeah. that's how it works out, great. That's really great because it sounds like you were 
open to that and I think a lot of people put so much time and energy and years as you said you started when you were a kid into yeah. acting here's the thing that I try to tell people is like acting is something that like a five-year-old can like get into because yeah. they have acting classes but yeah. they don't have like hosting classes for five-year-olds but I think that if they had yeah. that more people would get into it there's just so few mediums that you have available to you as a kid to like yeah. show off your fabulousness mm-hmm. and so whatever one is the one is the one that you cling to and decide to make a life out of. Absolutely. Also, I'll just also say, I think I also got to the point where I just was kind of a little, fuck you, Hollywood. Yeah, jaded. Uh Where, yeah, like, I just kind of was like, I don't like, I didn't like the idea of other people deciding if I was good enough or not. It's a lot of money and it's a lot of time doing the workshops, doing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Which are and I now, was, BTW. You know, if I were trying to be a lawyer or a doctor, or whatever, like I wouldn't be paying to go meet with, some, you know, mm-hmm. to maybe get a part on a show or be called into that office. And I kind of just felt like, you know what, if I'm going to be successful, I want to have it be over something I created myself. Yes. And if people want to come to me, that's fine. But I want to build something that I build myself. So I guess so then you slowly stopped is what you're saying mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. And that's when also, you know, because I was in class yes. for a very long uh-huh. time, for about eight years. Yeah, that's right. And I just got to the point too with that where I was just like, I just didn't feel like I was growing anymore. I yeah. just felt like I feel like a baby going to class. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it was keeping me in this weird like post-college yeah I don't know I like just didn't feel like an adult right yeah I just yeah. felt like yeah. I need to not because for me it was just such a safety blanket and I loved it yeah. loved my teachers well, of course, like, it's you a great know, time it's amazing I think is fun right yeah and yeah. everything I learned was phenomenal yeah but it also just kept me in like this little safe bubble mm-hmm. Where I just mm-hmm. felt like I I need to do some growing mm-hmm. up and I don't think I can do that right here. Continuing to come to class. And so did you have like a moment though, even though it was like a slow transition, did mm-hmm. you have a moment where you were like, I am not an actor anymore or I do not want to be an actor anymore? Did you have like that particular uh, moment or are you just sort of like, nah. I never like have s- never said that yeah. out loud or yeah. really thought that specifically, mm-hmm. but I was just like, you know what? This isn't. It. Like trying to be on TV shows and in film, mm-hmm. like that's not where I want to put my energy. That's great. I would just like say to people, like you've had tremendous success with that, and that's been really great. How far had you gotten? Like agents, mm-hmm. bookings, unions. Were you getting auditions? How many auditions a year, or a week? Would you say you were right. getting? So, you know, I got my SAG card. Okay. Had you like I made some money like, as an actor? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, my biggest thing was probably a you know yo play commercial. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then I did. <laughs> I feel like this is my biggest, biggest thing I did <laughs> was playing Elizabeth Moss's body devil in The One I Love. And did you feel after that experience, was that like closer towards you leaving or like sort of in the middle? That was when I feel like that was when I felt the most secure in uh, my acting and uh, like I can actually do this because uh, uh-huh. some other things kind of happened at that time too. And I was like, yeah, like I'm just, I was offered, well, it was between that film or being the lead I at the same time I was offered the lead in you know a B movie yeah. horror film oh, sure uh-huh. and I didn't it was a weird thing because I was like ooh should I do that or sh- or is it more is it more yeah. beneficial to my career to be surrounded and, like make connections with yeah. Mark Duplass and these yeah. you know kind of people right so when I went I went with that one and so I guess we kind of talked about why you quit Do you want to like nutshell that? You quit because... Yeah, because I found this other thing I was very passionate about Mm -hmm. that I felt was just more appropriate. I was willing to work harder for it. Yeah, see, I think that's so big. I have a friend who is a musician and an actor Mm -hmm. together, and he had said something about acting and how he wasn't like willing to work that hard for it, but would get some opportunities. And music was harder, but he was willing to work harder yeah. for it. And he was sort of like perplexed about that. And I said very matter-of-factly, as I do, yeah, well, that's that's your indication of which one you want to do. Yeah. Like, if you're willing to do the work for one and you're not as much for the other, yeah. then there is your answer. I mean, I had a similar experience with, like, musical theater when I first yeah. began because I could mm. sing. And I had a producer say to me, mm can you sing? And I said, yes. And he said, can you go into any room and know that you can out sing anyone in any room? And I said, no. And he sort of like shrugged his shoulders like, well then. Yeah. And a lot of people feel like he was being an asshole, but I felt like what he was indicating to me was yeah. like, well, that's 
that's where you got to go if you're going to be the yeah. girl. And I didn't want to do all that. You know, it's kind right. of like finding a man that treats you really well versus like <laughs> knowing you're in this tumultuous relationship with somebody who's not giving you very much attention being like, I quit you. And yeah. then he calls you and you're like, oh, do you yeah. still like me? Okay, so how is having quit? It's fine. Um, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't like you Your were asking end. like, do you miss it? Do you, yeah. that sort of thing. Like every now and then, like if I see, see a TV show or I'll see it and I'll kind of be like, mm, I could have done that part. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. make me all have that <laughs> Yeah, sometimes. yeah, yeah. But no, but I'm never like, oh gosh, like I'm just dying to get back yeah, into acting, acting class yeah. or, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. But I did start doing stand-up comedy, mm. which was mm. something, again, I always wanted to do because I, again, I'm just myself. I was and say. I really, en- I don't know, I just. And also in your control, also like yes. up to you. Yep. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That, and again, with that. I'm not treating it like, I gotta be Amy Schumer. Because I think people who get into acting in the first place, there's something in you that you just, you you enjoy performing. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gets out that energy every Mm -hmm. now and then. Like, oh cool, I'm on a stage Mm -hmm. and I can do this little thing and people laugh Mm -hmm. at me. Cool, my ego feels great. (laughs) Yeah, I do think like that's a thing. It's like to ask yourself why you got into acting. And I Mm -hmm. think a lot of people are like hams when they're young. And they're performers in in a sense when they're young. And so they get into, acting because that's where you can go and be a ham and that's the other thing with me too I'm very I I don't do well with like a floaty schedule Uh, structure is very important for me that's where I thrive that's where I do my best that's right so that's why I do like having so I have you know a few clients that I do social media work for Um, one is um, a women chefs organization Mm. which supports women in food so Mm. it's still food related Mm. so like I just just love it and then I also started working with a hosting coach mm. and a mm. host she's a mm. former host she mm. does classes da, da, da. Mm-hmm. so I'm working with her which mm. has been great so I like good. knowing that like okay this is my day I have this this and this you know work to do that I'm getting paid for and what I was gonna that. say and a little more stability and money <laughs> yeah yeah uh-huh. and that too that's mm-hmm. another thing I wanted to be making good money yes you know and I know a lot of people are servers and bartenders that sort of like I tried, I just wasn't cut out for it, and I just accepted that. I have so much respect for anyone in the service industry because I know how hard it is. For me, that kind of like job where you can be flexible with your schedule, it was just hard for me. Couldn't do it. Yeah, Yeah. I think a lot Mm -hmm. of people have that, and then they feel kind of trapped. Like, well, if that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, now there's Uber, but people can't even really make much money off of that anymore. So they're sort of trapped about what do you do that gives you flexibility, but also gets you money and quick money Mm -hmm. and flexible money, which is a hard thing to do. I just feel like also with acting, because like if it's a good job, you know, it's a good chunk of money or like you book a national commercial, you know, and and you get so it's like, oh man, I just want to book this commercial so I can make 60 grand. Well, because control isn't a natural thing to want to have control over yeah. your victory and in acting and many parts of the business I know writing directing you don't you just don't have control so you have lots of friends who are still acting mm-hmm. what do you notice about those friends of yours who are working because mm-hmm. I there are a lot of people listening to this are people who are uh, quitting call or in college still or just sure. leaving and mm-hmm. getting started and do you feel like you notice if anything about the people who work consistently versus the people who struggle. And it's funny because I just feel like with everything, it mm-hmm. you know, there are highs and lows. Like mm-hmm. a good friend of mine, um, Samantha, she goes through periods where she books a lot and mm-hmm. sometimes it's a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. I mean, but she usually works pretty consistently. She does, yeah. But yeah, with anything, I think, I mean, it's just really finding your niche, mm-hmm. just really finding what your type is mm-hmm. and targeting those shows. Yes. I talk to people about that a lot, like the finding your type. Yeah. Like that I think that's the thing that takes the longest yeah. and that's why it takes a long time to get going is people think it's like about the agent or the reel or any of that sort of stuff and I feel yeah. like it's finding your zone. Yeah. And once you find your zone and you can commit to that and you can enjoy it, yeah. then you go. Right. But most people spin trying to find their zones for like 10 years. Totally. Right. But also, I mean, something I have noticed though, none of my friends who are still acting, mm. even, you know, working, mm. but they they are not in their ideal financial situation. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like they still have a day job. They're still doing, you know, mm-hmm. like whether it's working retail or mm-hmm. in a restaurant or mm-hmm. da da da. Mm-hmm. Um, They're not making enough to make a living. Exactly, as an actor. As an actor. So they still have this other job that they don't necessarily love, but they got to pay the bills. I mean, know? the statistics from SAG that I remember hearing years ago was like three percent of SAG members yeah. make enough to make a living every yeah. year. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Just so people know. No, I mean, it's and, true. and then and when, they should know. when you're told that when you like come out here, you're like, oh well, except I'm the exception, right? Which is great. I mean, I think we should. We're all. We should all think that we're sure. the exception. What I try to tell people is like, dream to be the exception, hope to be the exception. Yeah. And I and I really hope that I hope all of you are. I hope everyone Absolutely. is the exception. But then don't be mad at yourself that you're not. You know, be gentle to the artist self. Okay. So this is what people really want to know. <laughs> does the dream does that go away? For me, I just feel like maybe my dream has morphed into a different like right it's still a dream right. but you're it's still rich and famous but in maybe a in a different yeah, way but for a different yeah, <laughs> yeah like I, I agree i'm gonna open my I amazing understand. restaurant yeah gonna, i don't know yeah um it's still kind of it looks yes. different i think that's so great because i think that people think that when they leave acting mm-hmm. that then they're gonna miss that dream and that dream will like eat them up alive and eventually they'll like become bitter and jaded and all that sort of stuff and what i say is if you're bitter and jaded when you leave you're probably going to be bitter and jaded about it but if your dream is the dream but how you experience that dream just changes like mm-hmm. yours i think that that yeah that's it's just what you love changes yeah right absolutely fantastic um so do you recommend that people quit um i think that people should absolutely find something else that they are either as passionate about Mm -hmm. or almost as passionate about Mm -hmm. as their acting career Mm -hmm. and research that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if you do get to a point where you just, maybe you're burned out and you just, or whatever it is, whatever your reasons are, um, that you just don't want to do it anymore that you still have joy and you still have something else that you can be involved in Mm -hmm. that where you didn't spend like 15 years as a bartender and then all of a sudden you're just like I've just been a bartender for 15 years the acting thing I don't really want to do it anymore but now I don't really know what What to do do? Mm -hmm. so I think the sooner you can find that other passion Mm -hmm. and dabble into that a Mm -hmm. little bit I think the better mm-hmm. that is. So when do you think, like, what would be a sign for you for people that they should quit? Um, I don't know. If you start to dread going to audition uh-huh. or you just are like, oh, I just don't really feel like it. Uh-huh. I just had, like, I had some moments. Like, I just didn't feel like rehearsing scenes for class anymore. I yeah. was just like, I just don't want to be spending my time doing this. Yeah. It just wasn't, for whatever reason, bringing me the same joy Mm -hmm. that it was at Mm -hmm. one point. I do want to talk about this since you brought it up because I think it's really important about becoming a professional student. I think, yeah, I think it's very easy to Mm -hmm. have it happen, especially for personalities Mm -hmm. who like school. I'm a very type A person. Like, I was always teacher's pen, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Like, I always, like, liked doing well in school. Mm -hmm. And so, like, an acting class can become that same kind of environment. You're just, like... Rewards for being great. Exactly. And then you go out into the real world and you audition Mm -hmm. and you don't get that. And that can be really jarring for people and is part of the reason why people are stars in class and don't move on. Right. And I had that experience and it was very hard for me for the first, I'd say, couple of years. Sure. I didn't have the tools I felt like to audition Mm -hmm. and I felt the only way I could really get those I couldn't recreate that environment except for in auditions audition classes didn't work for me because I couldn't recreate the need for a job and wanting to impress and being competitive with other people and that same thing except for going out and I will just say to people because everyone thinks I'm like so sunshiny happy about acting all the time like it was really hard Mm -hmm. like I had a couple of years where I was really emotionally in pain yeah because I knew that there was something I was really good at and there was a section of it that I wasn't yet Mm -hmm. in order to get to the thing I wanted I had to become good at that section that was really um humiliating is the only word I can say 
Very good. Okay, so I end with five questions. So what was the hardest thing about the show business for you? The, there's no guarantee. Mm. There's no, and you're never going to know why you didn't get the part. It right. might have nothing to do with how well you did in the audition. It's just that Katie Ann is the producer's niece, and yes. we're going to give her the part. And you, you're not privy to that information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a really good example of that is I had an office that I was going into that like was like, this office, you guys, years ago, I was like, if I could just even get into this office. Yeah. And I was getting in, mm-hmm. and I was crushing, and I would never get callback. This is one of the few mm-hmm. offices that still does callbacks. Yeah. And they would kept bringing me back, yeah. and so I knew they loved me, and I called one of our really good friends, and I said, uh, what is happening? Like, mm-hmm. I don't even get callbacks. Mm-hmm. And she said, and this is a girl who at this time I had this conversation with her, was a serious regular for a show, yeah. had major guest star credits. Mm-hmm. She said, every time I go in for a guest star, mm-hmm. I know it's already been offered out. Yeah. And the only reason I'm going to get the part is because the offers don't accept. And thank God I had asked somebody, I would have just yeah. like sat in turmoil, mm-hmm. right? But those are the sorts of things that you don't get that feedback. They're mm-hmm. not going to call you and say, we loved Audrey. She mm-hmm. was so great, but we offered the part out. They're too busy, yep. right? Okay. Yep. What was the best thing about the business for you? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing was good. No, I mean, just to even like audition for a commercial. That's something so many people who live other places dream about. Like, oh my gosh, how cool would it be? And I still consider it, you know, yeah. an accomplishment Absolutely. that like I made it this far. It and, is. and just, you know, the opportunity to be seen on a show or mm. a commercial. Mm. Um, so let me ask you this then. Why do you felt like you chose acting? I liked the idea of putting on a show Mm -hmm. and being a character. When Mm -hmm. I was little, that was my thing. I made up all these different characters. Mm -hmm. Um, This one character, when I was like eight years old, her name was Capio. And I would put on my mom's like leopard nut silk nightgown yes. and a black beret yeah. and sunglasses and I made a fake cigarette thing and I walked around like a little French person. Let me hear your names. Capio voice. Oh my Come on, let's hear it. Hello. <laughs> this is Capio. <laughs> what? No, I cannot hear you. I am too busy. She sounds kind of rough. I love it. No, it's good. Um, <laughs> she's somewhere between the two. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, just, yeah. she's Eastern European. We'll yeah, but, uh, so yeah but that was Capio. Um, <laughs> wait, what was the question? Why, why did, did you, you like acting? Like why acting? acting? Yeah. yeah, why because, acting? Why yeah, pursuit it was of that? Just, it was just fun, and I think also when I was very young, I just thought it was very easy to do. I was just like, oh, well, I'm cute and funny. And I will be. Yeah, and I'll be discovered, yeah. and <laughs> it's going to be fine. Yeah. You know? I love it. Yeah, that's what everyone thinks. That's good. Yeah. Um, okay. What do you wish someone had taught you or managed to get you to understand back when you were just a dreamer or a student dreaming the dream of being an actor? Um, That there are a lot of hoops and there are a lot of intricacies within the business and it is a business. Right. It's not just you show up and you book a thing. And you're talented so you get it. Yeah, and I think, I mean, also too, the industry has changed so much Mm -hmm. now that, you know, we're in the 2000s. (laughs) Like to the point where like, yeah, like, all of a sudden it jumped from black and white headshots to, to color. color, to digital, to this, to this, yeah. to all these websites you gotta yeah. upload your photos on and yeah. having your reel and it like that like 30 years ago, like that wasn't None a thing. Of that. 20 yeah. years ago it wasn't right. a thing. Right. Um, so just kinda all these things come at you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say suddenly the financial demands of becoming an actor, the cost, the financial yeah. cost of becoming mm-hmm. an actor really yeah. increased very high. Right. Very fast. It's an investment. Yeah. You don't think about that when you get, like, I didn't think about that when I graduated with my theater degree, no. you know? It's mm-hmm. like, I didn't even know that was a mm-hmm. thing until, mm-hmm. like, I, you know, did acting classes Yeah. Here. I'm going to do a whole podcast later, you guys, called The Math and Money of Acting, where I'm going to discuss That's very important. how much it costs to become an actor when you start, why you have to spend that money, and why it can take a long time, because... Some people who come from families that have a lot of money, they can afford those things. And so they seem to get started really fast and everyone's Mm -hmm. jealous of them. 
And that's just the privilege that they have. And right. some people don't have that money, so they have to work longer to pay for those things. Mm-hmm. What most actors do is they decide not to pay for those things. They go the cheaper route to save money. Yeah. But what actually ends up happening is they just waste a lot of time because yeah. they have to go get the good thing eventually. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so what do you feel like is your biggest struggle right now, personally or professionally? Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm single. <laughs> um, yeah, that's been dating She's in LA. She's super has been cute, you guys. I just challenge. want you to know. If you are a handsome, <laughs> passionate, capable man in the age group of? Uh, 35 to 42. 35 to 4. That seems doable <laughs> to me. You can hit up Tara. She's so great. Don't send her a penis snap. Yeah, chest, don't do please, that. Please, ever. So violating. Um, okay, so let's talk about social media. Where can they find you? Um, at the food pervert on all the things on Instagram, Twitter, and then uh, then I do uh, like one thing you want people to know about. Um, uh, people can know about the fact that I am actually speaking at an upcoming conference. Great. Um, the Women Chefs and Restauranters Conference in Seattle in Fantastic. May. My uh, friend Gigi, who's also a food blogger, we do cooking videos together, Mm -hmm. and we are going to be doing a demo and presentation um, at this conference in Seattle. And we got a great write-up the other day, an article referred to us as top industry professionals, Mm. so that made me feel very special. (laughs) (laughs) We like it when Tara feels special. Yay! Validation! Love validation. Um, and then I talk about one thing I want people to talk about. Um, I want to tell people about the um, Actors Fund. I recently found out, you guys, the Actors Fund isn't just for actors. In fact, their slogan is the Actors Fund for everyone in entertainment. Who knew? Mm-hmm. And they are doing a series of workshops. It's an eight week group that is free, and it is called. Are you on the fence with life in the industry? Take the time to explore with your peers the emotional, spiritual, and practical issues of continuing your career in the industry. So if that is something that you are looking into, then please check out the Actors Fund. They have all kinds of services, though, you guys. They will help you pay your rent if something happens. They'll, um, they have counseling services, group counseling services. They can help you uh, figure out how to pay your taxes or find an um, artist income housing, which is really great. That's downtown mm-hmm. in a cool part of town. So um, check them out. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank I'm so glad I think you're going to have a really be really helpful to a lot of people who are mm-hmm. thinking about what they're doing with their lives. So I really appreciate it. Um, all right, thanks. Thank you. Next week on Audrey Helps Actors, we talk to me. So hopefully, you don't find that so obnoxiously narcissistic of me, but. Jesse and I were talking about deciding to stay in this career, and I really wanted to give everyone some insight into what it is like to stay in this career. And since I'm the closest person to me who has stayed in, I thought, let's go ahead and give you guys a little bit of candor and transparency, which you know I'm such a big fan of, about me and my continual decisions to stay in this career. Some of my highlights from my own episode of this podcast is my understanding now of what the career is. The biggest uh, myth is that the career is this thing ahead of you. And what I now understand is the career is all of it. The career is the time in your life when you can't get auditions, and then the time in your life when you can, but you can't book, and then the time in your life when you book, but you can't book the big stuff. All of that is a part of your career. Also, we discuss whether or not this career gets any easier. No, it gets more fun, I would say. It does get more fun. Like a video game, I think that's such a good analogy yeah. because like, as you get better at the video game, you get a harder level, but the game becomes more fun. So stay tuned next week. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a lot of Audrey, so there you go. But Jesse interviews me and that's really sweet. So if nothing else, listen for that. This show is produced and edited by Jesse Lumen. He is a writer, director, producer, and virtual reality genius and wizard. If you are creating a current virtual reality experience, 
please look him up and get in contact with him because he is on it. Special thanks to Bridget Valdez. That's Bridget, B-R-I-G-I-T-T-E, Valdez. She is not on social media, but you can sure find her on IMDb. And also to Tara Redfield. She is known as the food pervert on social media. They were both lovely ladies. Thanks, ladies. Don't forget to like and subscribe on iTunes. I'm also on Instagram, Audrey Helps Actors on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, Audrey Helps Actors on Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter, Audrey Helps Act, A-C-T on Twitter. Also, special thanks to Thomas Snodgrass for the mic assistance and providing us with an extra mic here and there. And special thanks to Alok Mehta for all of his help and work on the theme song. Music this week by Ari De Niro. So thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you next week. And most importantly, don't forget your towel.